Hello, welcome back to this Mercedes Sprinter camper conversion and in today's video we're going to be doing a SketchUp tutorial. We're going to take my initial concept design that was in the first video and we're going to further develop it and do a really detailed drawing. What I want to focus on in this SketchUp tutorial are these high level wall cupboards. In this video I'm going to draw these high level wall cupboards in great detail. We're going to be drawing them exactly how I want to construct them and then from this drawing we can create a cutting plan and go straight into production. In the last episode we took some really detailed dimensions of the inside of our sprinter van then we came into the studio and we drew this detailed model. This will give us a much more accurate representation of the inside of our van for when we come to draw the cabinetry. I hope you've been following this series of taking some dimensions of your own van and drawn your own internal model. Don't worry if you haven't, if you just want to have a go with this software I'll put a link in the description below and you can download a copy of my model of my van and then you can draw along with me. The first bit that we want to focus on is this top corner of the van. This is where we're going to start drawing the cupboards. For the furniture in our van we're going to be using a lightweight furniture board. The first thing I want to do is to construct the end panel of these wall cupboards. These lines on the side of the van indicate where there's a main structural support and it's this part of the van that I want to screw some of my battens in to help to support this wall cupboard. So we'll grab the tape measure tool, I'll use these points as a reference, click on this end point and I'll drag a line along the red axis. This will give me a horizontal line. These are only guidelines, I'm going to use these just to draw on. Click on this vertical line because I know this is actually vertical and I'm going to come out 300 millimeters. That's going to be the depth of my cabinet front to back. So there we have the basics of our end panel overall size. I'll click on the pencil and just use these points as references. Click on this, draw a line to the top of this intersection click on this end point, click on these reference points and click back to the starting position. It's difficult to see but that has created a surface there. If I just grab the push-pull tool, hover over there, you can see I've got a surface there that I can manipulate. Before we push-pull that surface, I'm going to just clip this corner off. Grab the tape measure tool again, use this side as a reference, click on it and start to drag vertically and then I'm going to put in a dimension of 25mm. This is just so I can find the centre point of a circle that I'm going to draw as a radius on this corner. Click on this side, drag horizontally, put in 25mm and enter. This will just give me a reference point, a 25mm diameter circle. I can now click on this arc tool Click on this intersection as the centre point of the arc, come to this edge, click here and then you can see it's now starting to draw an arc and then all I want to do is click on this intersection to complete the arc. I'll take my eraser tool, I'll come in here and I'll just clip off these two corner lines and there we've got a radius corner. The thing with furniture board, I'm going to be trimming this with a PVC push on trim and it doesn't like very sharp corners so all of the corners of my cabinetry need to have a slight radius on them so that the trim can bend round there. Now we can just go to edit and just remove these guidelines. Grab the push pull tool, hover over this surface, you'll see it shades itself when you hover over, click start to drag. This will give it some thickness. Now the furniture board is 15 millimeters so type in 15 and enter and that's given us an end panel that's 15 mil thick. Before we make this a component we just want to give it some texture so triple click make sure that it's all selected and then grab one of these materials I'm going to choose this wood veneer and just paste that onto that component. Once that's done just right click make it a component, 
we'll give it a name call it end panel just make sure that there's a tick in this box to replace the selection with the component and then click create that's now made a component of our end panel so if we look in our component directory on the right hand side here we can see there's an end panel here and if we wanted another one for the other end we simply have to just drag one out and there we have it the cupboard's going to be made up of two faces a front face which is going to have the doors in it and a bottom face which is basically a shelf so again I'll grab my tape measure tool I always like to lay out some construction lines it just makes it easier to draw and then you can simply get rid of them when you finish with them I'm going to have a 10 mil recess around the end panel from the face and the bottom so click on this edge start to drag horizontally type in 10 and enter click on this construction line drag horizontally type in 15 which is the thickness of the board and enter now on this bottom edge I want to come up 20 millimeters initially and enter and then come up 15 and enter I also want to do the bottom of this front face so I will come up 10 as well actually 10 and enter Right, this gives me some construction lines of which I can draw these shelf pieces in. We've got our guidelines, so it's simply a case of grabbing the pencil tool and going over these outlines. So we'll start at this intersection, click, start to draw a line, click at the end, come down, click at this intersection point, come back to this intersection, and then close at the start point. This will give us a surface we can see there that we can just drag click the push pull tool hover over that surface and click and start to drag towards you now for the purpose of this tutorial I'm going to make this cupboard 1800 long or approximately six foot so type in 1800 and enter that will give me a six foot long shelf for 1800 mil again select tool triple click use the material that we had before click on that paste the material onto the component then right click make it a component we're going to call this shelf and then click create we do exactly the same with the front face take the pencil tool again zoom into these intersections click on this intersection start to draw a vertical line up to the top here click here click on this intersection back all the way down to here click on this intersection and then close with it here again that's given us another surface that we can push and pull use the push pull tool grab onto this surface and start to pull towards you use the same dimension 1800 millimeters and enter that's now given us the front face of the cupboard with the select triple click come across to our material paste that onto our model right click make it a component we'll call this front and click create okay so there we've got one end panel and we've got the front face of the cupboard and the bottom shelf we could just stick an end panel on here now but I'm going to leave that off for a second because what I want to do is I want to draw the internal structure of this cupboard so to start this process I'm going to just get rid of this side wall I don't really need this just for the moment so in our layer control we just untick that side and that disappears I'm also going to get rid of these guidelines come up to edit delete guides and now we can start to add some internal structure I'm going to be using some plain squared edge battens softwood battens to basically fix this cabinet to the structure of the van there's horizontal ribs that go across the van from left to right and I want to use these to screw into to support the weight of this cupboard 
I also want to use this structural brace that comes across the side of the van to screw into along the bottom here. So I'm going to need a few battens. So let's just start off with a simple timber batten shape. So we'll grab the rectangle tool. I'm going to just come anywhere on the end of this end panel here and just start to draw a square. And then I'll type in my dimensions. Now the plain squared edge timber that I'm using is 18 millimeters comma by 44 millimeters enter and there you can see that's given us a timber batten or the end profile of a timber batten what I'll do now is I'll just use the push pull tool I'll hover over that start to drag it towards me and again I'll type in 1800 millimeters and enter that's given me a six foot long timber batten. Triple click the batten to select it all and then apply a color. I'm just going to use a different color. Right click, make it a component. We'll give this the name batten and click create. Now we can just simply move it, use the move tool To move it, click on the end of the baton and then move it down to this bottom corner. So this baton we can fix to the shelf. I'm probably going to use pocket holes to secure that to the shelf and, and glue along this joint. And then we can obviously drive screws through this baton into that side brace of the van. We'll need another batten to support this upper edge here. So we'll just go into our component directory, drag another batten out, place it on our model, and then we just move it into position. Now with this batten, I want this one to be flat on the top here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it by this corner, place it in this top corner here, Initially, I'm going to rotate it. I want to stop this rotate tool from changing axis when I move around on my model. So once I've got it on the green axis, hold the shift key down and that will lock it. Now come up to this top corner, click on this top corner as the start of the rotation. Click on this corner and then you've got control of the piece you can spin it around that original origin point and then just rotate it all the way up till it's on that edge of the van there sorry let me bring that down so you can see what I'm doing there so I'm rotating it round and I'm just going to snap on that line which is the top edge of the van because the top edge of the van is curved that's not a horizontal line if you see I've just got a faint red dotted line there which is a horizontal line so that baton is slightly angled up click on the move tool grab hold of this top corner and then just now bring it down so it's on the top corner of the cupboard so there we go that baton is now in the right position and it'll be flat on the roof of the van we can actually just copy this one now press the control key to bring up the little plus symbol on the move tool grab hold of this corner click and start to move and you'll see we'll get an exact copy and we'll just move that right to this corner and there we go so we've got two battens on the top of the cupboard and we've got a batten on the wall so these two battens are going to screw into the roof ribs and this batten here is going to screw into the side wall. This batten is going to be joined to the bottom shelf with pocket holes. This batten on the front, which is highlighted in blue, is also going to be joined to the front using pocket hole screws and glue. And then this batten here, I'm going to put some dividers in here just to give this cupboard a bit of extra strength. And then this batten is going to be secured to those dividers. So let's draw those next. 
The easiest way to draw these dividers, now we've got all these battens in place, is to grab the pencil tool and go around the outline on this end panel. So start in this corner, click, draw a line, click here, click on this button, click on the top edge, come across, click on this top edge, click on the bottom of the button, across, and just keep tracing this line around all these features. So this end point, this point up here, all the way down to this point, this part of the baton, down to the shelf, and right the way across to where we started. And you'll see that's actually now given us a surface. And what I can do is give that some thickness, use the push-pull tool, click and start to drag it towards you, type in 15 millimeters and enter, use the select tool, triple click, we'll give it a texture, I'm going to use this sort of second wood veneer texture just to make it look different and apply that, right click, make it a component, give it a name, let's call this divider, click create. That's our divider built. If I just grab the move tool and move it out of the way, you can see the shape that it's created. And this is the shape that we're gonna to have to cut out of a piece of plywood to accept those battens. All that we need to do now is move it into position and copy it, just so we get the individual dividers going down the cupboard. First thing I wanna do, adjust my view. Let's put some guidelines on. Get the tape measure tool, start on this edge, click and drag along the green axis. And I want two dividers, so I want to divide this cupboard into three equal parts. The cupboard's 1800 mil long, so 1800 divided by three is 600. So type in 600 and enter. Do the same again, click on this line, move along the green axis, type 600 and enter. These are the two positions of our dividers. So now with the move tool, what we want to do, we've got this piece selected. We just want to hover over the midpoint of this divider, click on that, and now we've got control of it. And what I want to do is I want to move it along the green axis. I don't want to move it anywhere else. I want it constrained on that green axis. So once that green line comes up, if I hold the shift down again, the shift will just lock it. And you'll see it just goes a little bit bolder just to tell me that that is locked. So now it doesn't matter where I move my cursor, it's not going to deviate off that green axis. So we come all the way along to we're on our construction line. It says constrained on line and click. Now, to copy one, we just press the control button, brings up that little plus symbol. We grab hold of this component from the midpoint again, click, and now we've got a copy. And again, what we want to do is, we'll get that green line to come up, there it is. We'll hold the shift key, just to lock it on that green axis, and then we'll bring it along to this second construction line so it says constrained on lines and we'll click. So now those two dividers are exactly dividing that cupboard into three equal parts. All that remains now is to put another M panel on here. So we simply go into our component directory, scroll down to the M panel, drag one out, place it on our model. Don't worry too much if it's in the wrong position at the moment because we can simply grab hold of a point like this top corner here and then move it to exactly where we want it to be. There. So there we have the construction of our cupboard. These timber battens will be screwed straight through the batten into this ply divider. The same with these battens, there'll be pocket holes into the front and screws through the batten into the divider. 
We can screw through the batten here into the divider. We can also use pocket holes to screw this batten to the bottom shelf. So this is a very simple, very lightweight, but very strong structure for our cupboards. You know, you don't need to make your cupboards out of two by four timber and six inch nails to make them strong enough to support what you want to put in them. It's best to keep the structure as simple and as lightweight as possible just to keep the weight down in your van. And lastly, what I want to show you is how you can customize these materials. The best resource for that is a 3D warehouse. Click on the icon in the toolbar and in the search box type in wood veneer. What I found is people have uploaded samples of different wood patterns. Let's pick this one for example. Here we've got a number of different wood patterns in one swatch. We can download this straight into our model, click yes. And then once it's in our model we can actually use any of these materials on our cupboard. So we'll place it somewhere on the floor here. And now in order to use any of these materials all we have to do is go to the materials tray, pick up this pipette tool and click on any of the ones that we want to use. Let's use this one here. Click on that and you'll see it appears in the materials box and that will allow us to then paint it onto one of our components. Come back to our cupboard, what we'll do is we'll apply it to this front face. We want to get into this component to edit it. So with the select tool, double click and what that does is that means we're inside the component editing it. Everything else has gone greyed out. You can see there's a very small dotted box around it just to signify that we're inside that component. Click on the material that we've just downloaded and then paint it onto the surface. There we go, that's very similar to a Zebrano type furniture board that's very typical in camper vans. Now if I was constructing this myself I wouldn't really want the grain pattern to go vertically like that, I'd want it to go horizontally along this piece. So what we can do in SketchUp is we can manipulate this texture even further. With the Select tool, right click on this face and come down to Texture, we want to alter the position, click on that. And what that does is that gives you the whole of the texture that's been applied to that face with a couple of tools. You'll recognize these, this is the move tool and this circle is the rotate tool. And what we want to do, we can actually move this whole texture if there was a particular knot pattern or something that we wanted in show. We could move it to where we thought it was pretty and then drop it there. And then with the rotate tool we can actually spin it through 90 degrees. Grab hold of this tool. Spin it through 90 degrees until you're happy with the placement of it and then release. And then just select anywhere outside of that and that's now been applied to our piece of furniture. Go through the same process with all of the other components of your cupboard and apply the same material to these end panels and if you really wanted to you could change the material on the battens and the internal dividers. I hope that's given you a few extra tips to improve your own SketchUp skills. If you've been drawing your own van, I'd really like to see some photographs or maybe just email me a model that I could have a look at. Be really interested to see how you're getting on with it. If you've got any questions at all, please do write them in the comments below and I'll be pleased to answer them as soon as I can. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers.